It's 6 a.m. on a Monday morning. You have to wake up and get ready for work. Tired as you are, you mindlessly stumble forward to the kitchen and grab the first cup of coffee. Slowly, as you sip on that delicious cup of joe and feel it wet your lips, you begin to wake up a little bit more. You quickly cook up a couple of eggs for breakfast. Today, you prepare them exceptionally well. They have an exquisite taste added on by the special sauce you prepared. After eating, you quickly run to the shower. And as you shower, you can feel the cold water running down your spine. You realize you lost track of time and hurry your way out. Now, you might be thinking, Okay, man, what the hell is your point? Well, the point is that despite the fact that you might think that the situation just described is a pretty mundane one, as trivial as it gets, you're wrong! The situation just described reveals one of the biggest mysteries of the human condition. Up there with the Big Bang. The inner first-person experiences that you have, the feeling of having sensations, perceiving colors, width, depth, and height, having emotions and thoughts, all of this is the mystery of the hard problem of consciousness. For years on end, Scientists and mystics alike have tried to tackle the seemingly insurmountable difficulties inherent in the mysteries of consciousness. In the last decades, the biological disciplines of neuroscience, physiology, and endocrinology and so have made pretty significant advances in determining what physical occurrences inside our bodies make us feel in certain ways. In other words, what biochemical processes underlie different conscious states of ours. For example, we know that when someone is anxious, their cortisol will probably be spiking through the roof. If someone is depressed, he or she will likely be suffering from a lack of serotonin in his or her brain. These are detailed descriptions of what a person reports to feel when certain chemicals, hormones, and neurotransmitters are or are not present in their bodies. But the way in which we determine these things is by asking people how they feel by asking them to report on their subjective state and then measuring different physical aspects of them simultaneously. And while all of these relationships might have very detailed and exhaustive descriptions of why they are the way they are, we aren't able to explain why it is necessary for us to possess a subjective experience with them. For example, we know that adrenaline rushes through our blood when we are in danger because it helps us act fast. But why is it that we should feel something while there is occurring a rush of adrenaline in our bodies? Why aren't we just mindless automata? Could it not be the case that hypothetically speaking, we could all be zombies, dead inside, not being able to see, hear, touch, taste, and feel, but nonetheless being biochemically programmed to react exactly as we do? One could, after all, imagine a robot that runs when it is in danger, cries when it is sad and so on, but has nevertheless no inner life. How is it that we are not carrying out all of these activities in the dark? The reason why this is so difficult to study is because it is the quintessential form of subjectivity. Consciousness is inherently subjective and no one can have direct access to our personal feelings, emotions, thoughts, and the private images that we have in our minds. All they can do is access the things that correlate with such self-reported conscious states. For example, you can measure the cortisol that is abundant when people allegedly report to be quote-unquote stressed, or the endorphins people have when they report to allegedly feel euphoric. But for all we know, they could be lying. They could in fact be feeling very relaxed with an influx of cortisol on their bodies, and just reporting the opposite and there is yet no way to prove or disprove this. Naturally, as when big questions like these permeate the public sphere, people rush in to try to give different answers. For one, religious folks try to play on the old soul and spirit card. The thing that is rendering your subjective experience, they claim, is the intangible and invisible soul that God has bequeathed to us. Now, if we go by scientific standards, this doesn't seem very plausible. So far, no studies or experiments have found evidence of there being a soul, and the question itself seems unfalsifiable. There is no central place at which your consciousness resides, 
our brain is compartmentalized and decentralized in a way that is not compatible with the existence of a soul, which would be considered the center of all experience. Next on comes the scientific explanation, which despite, despite being a little more enticing, is incomplete at best. Researchers have posited the idea that whatever consciousness is, it has to be related to information processing, and it works as a function of it. Our nervous systems are in essence information processing systems. The different neural connections that we have throughout our brain and body are more than anything serving us to interact with the outside world by processing information about it. If you take a look at the whole spectrum of different organisms, you will notice that those who have smaller and less complex nervous systems, for example a cockroach, seem to exhibit lower levels of consciousness than say a dog or a human, which have a much more complex information processing network. There seems to be much more awareness in a dog or in a human than there is in a cockroach, and they seem to have a much more enriched inner experience. Consciousness thus may be an evolved characteristic that grants us with the ability to be self-aware and be cognizant of the relationship we bear with our surroundings in order to enhance our survival and reproduction. Despite the fact that this seems plausible, it is still not convincing to many scientists, given that any action that we can conceive of, whether running away from a predator or trying to get food, does not necessarily entail the need to be self-aware. All of these activities, many scientists claim, can in principle be performed by mere automatic programming. We could all imagine a robot that detects threats and runs away, that determines when it needs energy and plugs itself to the charger, and yet wouldn't be able to necessarily have a subjective experience. Analogously, the functional activities that aid our survival and enhance how we interact with the surrounding environment could be done without having an inner life, rendering consciousness superfluous and unexplained by evolution. The jury is still out on the question, and answering it conclusively may be one of the most challenging investigative endeavors humanity has faced. Why would evolution grant us with a subjective inner world when mindless programming would very likely suffice for our survival? Please let me know what you think in the comments and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks.